Now this video could save your life. So please watch it until the end. Now, if you don't like it, or you don't like what I say, feel free to leave me a dislike. Feel free to unleash your rage in the comments. I can take that. But please watch the video because your life matters. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. And today I have decided to talk about knife quote unquote fights. And the reason why I've decided to talk about this topic is because having a look at the amount of violent deaths caused by knife stabbing, I have noticed that the numbers are rather significant. Now, of course, depending on the area where you live and how safe it is, you might have a higher or lower chance to find yourself in such a situation. But it's still worth and very important to have a video about this topic because it is a very and highly misunderstood topic. Now, in the vast majority of cases, when we talk about violent death or traumatic death, we're talking about either death through a major trauma to the central nervous system achieved with severe damage to the head and brain or loss of blood. Now, the reason for that is that your body requires a minimum amount of blood circulating in order for it to function. And if you don't have that amount of blood circulating, your system will shut down. Now, for the earlier scenario, of course, we were talking about blunt weapons most of the times, but in the latter scenarios, the knives qualify extremely well. As a matter of fact, stabbing the torso area several times will achieve just that. Now let's get straight to the facts. What I'm about to say is most likely going to upset quite a lot of people, but better upset than dead if you ask me. A knife fight is not a fight at all. So when you have a weapon involved, you move it from the realm of fighting into the realm of life to death combat. It is not a duel. Take that out of your mind. It's not a duel. You're not there with your weapon dueling 1v1 against your opponent, trying to overcome him. This is the greatest lie that gets a lot of people killed. So let's, get de let's debunk this very quickly. Now, the reason why I said that this will upset a lot of people is because you see, if you see a lot of those um, self-defense systems that you are taught in, uh, at gyms, for example, sometimes even Filipino martial art or sometimes even Aikido instructors that teach you how to disarm an opponent and everything. Now, you need to be very careful to these techniques that they teach you. Don't believe them. No disrespect to practitioners of these martial art. Please let me explain my point. Let me bring up my justification for such a statement. And then if you don't agree, please let me know in the comments below. All due respect, but let me show why these systems don't work. And then I'll give you what I think the most intelligent solution to the problem, how to solve such an equation, such an important equation, which has your life in the balance, how to do it. We will talk both defense and offense, looking at raw reality. So most people and most instructors will actually teach you that when you're fighting against an assailant and he's got a knife, then you are there, you know, you're, you're one against the other. If you see how they practice, and I've seen lots of videos about these things, they, they're both one against the other, you know, they, they sort of hit each other's blade and they're ready to begin and then there they are, both with a knife at hand, ready to use their techniques and when he comes to me, then I do this and then I take him and I carve the knife out of his hand and then I cut his throat and then and we will talk about judicial use of lethal force in a moment because there is also the, the the legal part that needs to be discussed very quickly but there we go so they do all their moves and everything they're all proud of, of what they are achieving the problem with that is that if you look at it if you look at people actually dying because they have been stabbed to death if you look at police officers who have been attacked by knives or if you talk about prisoners getting stabbed in a jail most of the times the assailant is not showing his weapon so he's going to, and of course, this is big, but I'm sorry, see only, I've got big knives. Let's say that the assailant's knife is this big, okay? So this is the blade, sort of a small knife, okay? Now, he is concealing it. He's walking towards you. He's fully committed to kill you. And then when he gets very close, he takes it out. It does not, does not do any of those cuts and fancy attacks that, that you have been taught to defend from. He just comes towards you and starts stabbing, 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 stab. It's brutal. Most of the times you will find yourself unprepared. Most of the times you will not recognize the threat. And on this note, the uh, American government has published a lot of videos to show how police officers need at least 10 feet of range in order to effectively draw their weapon and, and shoot two rounds to the assailant and use apply lethal force. This is the reaction time. They've done hundreds of tests. If they are closer than that, if they're even five feet, if the assailant runs towards them and starts stabbing, they do not have enough time to react. They don't have enough time to take the weapon. 
and shoot the center of mass. So you need distance, even if you have a gun. Some officers need 15 feet, others manage at 10 if they were alert, but still you go anywhere closer than that, the odds will be in favor of the attacker. Also, you have to consider the fact that you will be under stress. Your life will be at stake. You will have very few seconds to react and he's going to keep on stabbing and uh, that's not going to give you enough time to focus on your techniques. And I know what a lot of people are going to say. They're going to say, well, but if you're trained a technique many, many times, then you will do it automatically. You don't even, th you don't even think about it. You just do it as a reaction. True. But how many of these gyms and dojo actually have you practiced something like that? Like someone coming to you with a concealed weapon and then he starts stabbing like crazy or runs towards you like crazy and starting stabbing once you're dead and then you need to practice your techniques then. Most of them, they just spar. That's what they do. So if you train sparring, you will be good at sparring. But most knife situations like that in the streets don't happen that way. So you're not prepared to those. You cannot take something and hope that it will work for something completely different because it will be completely different. So what are you supposed to do? Let's get to that. So we have just realized how the odds are not in favor in the favor of the defendant. And to stress that point even further, there are only three possible outcomes of an altercation involving a knife. You go down, he goes down, you both go down. Going down meaning dead on the floor. So as you can see, you've got one chance out of three to get out alive. So with this thing in mind, the very first thing you should do if you are attacked by someone with a knife who is intent, whose intent is to stab you to death, is to run away. Run for your life. Don't get influenced by all these films and, and media and video games that show one man disarmed using his kung fu to kill five people with knives. Don't. Run away. If someone is starting to stab you, push them back and run away. But what if they corner me, you might ask? Well, the thing is, it is very, very difficult to corner someone whose intent is to run away. Because it will try to find any possible way, if that's what you have in mind, to get out of that situation. Whether it be pushing, whether it be you're holding me through your jacket, remove the jacket and run away. There are a lot of possibilities. It is very difficult to corner someone who wants to run away. On the other hand, if you're only half committed to run away, but in your mind you're thinking, well, they are cornering me, so now I've got to fight then you are letting them corner you. No, run away. There is only one case or one scenario where I would advise you not to run away and to stay there and engage in combat. That would be if, for example, they have got your daughter. Grab it. They grabbed your daughter, they grabbed your girlfriend, they grabbed your woman, they grabbed your best friend. They're gonna die. What are you gonna do? Run away? You can't run away in that situation. You gotta stand the ground, be a man, engage in combat. That is the only case where well, I would advocate not running away, to save the life of the people you love. You wanna rape my child slash girlfriend slash sister slash cousin slash friend over my dead body. In all other cases, run. And this is again a problem with these systems that teach you how to um, disarm an opponent, how to carve the knife out of their hands. They make you think that it's easy. As a matter of fact, I know that some of the comments will be, oh no, but I know how to, how to re remove the, the knife from a person's hand when he wants to attack you. It's easy. You just do this, do that, and do that, and tried it a million times in the gym. I'm really good at it. Please cringe now. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's extremely difficult. And again, the fact you're doing it in the gym to a person who is there with you to practice and lets you do it means absolutely nothing in the raw reality of facts. It's not impossible, but it's extremely difficult. Again, odds are against the defender. So, the attacker is not gonna let you do your move. He's not gonna put himself in the perfect position for you to perform your technique. He's going to most likely use the most effective way of using a knife, which is exactly what the ancient Romans did, stabbing quickly towards the torso area. This is why the Romans used gladius, Short sword, perfect of stabbing, very difficult to see it coming. And even if you grab his hand, it's actually very easy to remove your grab and keep on stabbing. So here are two things that I strongly suggest and that I believe are very effective on how to survive a combat situation from which you cannot run away. 
Well, um, the first thing, please always uphold the law. Follow the laws of your country. So, for example, I don't know about America if you're allowed to have knives for self-defense. In Italy, where I am, the situation is rather complicated because in Italy there is a differentiation between coltello, knife, uh, and pugnale, dagger. And anything that is double-edged is considered to be a, a, an actual weapon and you can't have it and you can't carry it around, and if you have a coltello, so something that's single-edged, um, you could, but it has to be, um, the blade has to be shorter than four centimeters. Otherwise, you're not allowed to. There are only certain situations where you could justify a knife a little longer than that, around like six centimeters. If you, for example, are a peasant or a farmer and you need it for work, or if you're a sailor and you need it to cut ropes for, for ships, or, or you're someone who needs to open packages for whatever thing, and this is what you were going to do. But if you go to a disco with a knife, so in Italy, really, the only thing you can do is bring a Swiss knife, one of those that have a lot of tools that you can justify the reason why you're carrying it. But anything else will get you in trouble. So. Um, of course, some of you might have handguns, some of you might, might uh, and it might be legal to carry them in your country. But um, what about a country like Italy where you can't carry a good weapon? Well, this is my uh, suggestion. First of all, carry what you're allowed to carry. If you don't have an actual weapon, use an improper weapon. Try to have it on you all the time, to have something. But the second weapon you can use, which you, can, you are definitely allowed to, to carry with you in any country, is light. Use a torch or a flashlight, like you call them in America. Now, this uh, technique was taught to me by an ex-American uh, Marine. Uh, he uh, taught me a very important thing, and he, he showed me how he had this very little torch, uh, but which was extremely powerful, and you just switch it on with a button here. What he did, he asked me to try and, you know, to be the thug, and he was just trying to whatever do to him. And as we, we got close, he pulled that on me and pointed it to my eyes and blinded me for 10 seconds. I could not see anything, and that is perfect. Plenty of time for you to run away or to finish off your opponent. On the finish off part again, we will get to the legal part at the end, because you need to be very careful. Self-defense can become manslaughter very easily in the eyes of the law, so we will discuss this very quickly. But a torch, a very strong torch, will compensate your smaller weapon. As far as defense is concerned, this will sound very strange to you, but honestly, look at all the numbers of people who get stabbed every day in the world. The numbers are high. Now, me, you want to know what I do? I do the same thing that ancient warriors did back in the day. I wear armor. Now, this is going to sound crazy, right? You're going to think that I'm complete nutter. It's not a problem. My friends know it. They know that I go out most of the time, so I wear armor underneath my regular clothing. So what armor do I wear? In my case, I wear male armor. Perfect idea for me is just having a sleeveless shirt of mail possibly ri half riveted, half solid rings, but a good alternative would be to have complete solid rings in welded mail. A good idea if it's just for self-defense and therefore not a re historical reenactment, a good idea would be to have it galvanized so you don't have to, to, to oil it and, it and that's not going to be a problem for your clothing. And that gonna save your life in that situation. But everyone is gonna see that, they're gonna think you're crazy. No, if you wear male armor underneath a sweatshirt, or even if you're wearing underneath normal clothing, I do it all the time. No one knows except my friends and, and cousins and family. They know, they know I always wear armor, but no one else will. But what sort of protection is that old sort of armor gonna achieve? Well, you're not fighting against a gun. That's modern warfare. You're fighting against a knife. Knife is ancient warfare. And male armor, riveted male armor, is extremely effective. And if you get small rings with a inner circumference of anything under six millimeters, so even five millimeters could be a good idea, it's gonna be impossible for a knife or any bladed weapon to go through. Don't consider tests done on buttered mail and do not get butter mail. It has to be riveted or full solid rings for it to function. Buttered will spread open. Solid rings, there's no chance that a modern knife can get through those. They were good against battlefield weapons of war. They will function against the knife. As a matter of fact, so when he starts stabbing and he stabs you three times, you push him away and run, he will see the first, you're not going down because the knife is not going through. Um, if he has got a very thin knife, then perhaps the point might get through a little bit, through the, the, the hole in the ring, but all you will get are very small punctures. Much better catch if compared to an actual full blade getting through your body and leaving you dead on the ground. And another possibility is that he gets his shove completely broken. He might have the, the blade completely bent because he's been trying to go through steel in which case it would have annihilated your opponent's weapon. You can do some tests, of course. Put the armor on the mannequin, don't believe me. If it's proper armor, you try to stab it, you will damage the blade and you will not get through. 
But what about the weight? You told us to run, but with all that armor you can't run. Not true. Anyone who understands function and armor will understand that a sleeveless shirt of mail, if it's riveted of riveted rings, will not weight more than five or six kilos most. That's nothing, also comparing, considering the fact that it, most of the weight will be at your hips. You can wear any sort of belt uh, to secure it tightly at the hips and you will not feel it. I wear it every day. I wear it all day. It is not a problem and mind you it's actually good training you will be basically do the sort of training that any roman soldier did back in the days wearing armor all day makes you tougher and it will not slow you down as a matter of fact i am trained for it i can run with that sort of armor on not a problem at all so now you've got a smaller weapon not very effective but you compensate with a very powerful light that you can blind your opponent with and you've got armor which gives you perfect defense you are in an advantageous position you have all the advantages and all the odds the combat situation are for you it will be very difficult for your opponent to overpower you so this is what I do I always have a torch might have a smaller weapon which is legal to carry or an improper weapon which is legal to carry and I will be wearing armor most of the times it's not going to be a problem that's fine trained i trained myself for carrying armor but if it does happen i will be prepared because remember the most effective and ultimate weapon of all is this if you use your mind you will win but you need to be prepared beforehand this is what made us the species that has dominion over the planet regardless of the fact that tigers and lion have got better natural weapons than we have but this is the best weapon so to finish it off on the legal note you need to be very careful there are some again in structures at gyms to show you how you are in this dual dance battle with your opponent and then um, for some reasons he you manage to disarm him take the knife he's running away and they start stabbing at the back like 10 times and then cut his throat this will become manslaughter in the eyes of the law so what I'm trying to say is you need there are only a very few situations where you're allowed to take your opponent's life and use deadly force that is when your life is at stake so if your opponent has lost his weapon and if your opponent is trying to run away let him run instead if he's stabbing you stab him back this is just to put it in a simple situation if you want to know more about this of course you should contact a lawyer so ask professionals to expand your understanding and a larger understanding of self-defense okay then well i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the metatron stay safe and remember the metatron spread his wings goodbye